Since I can remember, I was always in love with, uh, with biodiversity, especially animals. So I love going to watch birding, and so you go out and take your binoculars and see if uh, some rare birds fly over you, and you would be surprised that even in the middle of Vienna you can sometimes see really rare birds flying directly over your head. Biodiversity is the diversity of life on Earth uh, at all levels, from ecosystems, which are large ecological units, uh, to individual species and diversity within species. Populations of different species each carry their own uh, characteristics uh, at the genetic level, but also at the uh, aesthetic level. Uh, they are adapted to the local environment. I spent a lot of time in Costa Rica during my master thesis and in Brazil in the Amazon during my PhD. And I was wandering through the forest and enjoying the nature there and the species richness and some of this work of course is also scientific so we had to measure which trees are where and how they're doing, how much carbon they store, things like that. So based on this I have a really big database behind my application. We care about biodiversity because there is both an intrinsic value to protect it obviously because if we wouldn't protect it then nobody would and on the other side they underpin many of the critical functions of our um, natural world. Everyone is born with an attachment towards the natural world. There is just society and cultural norms that perhaps uh, make them go away. Living on this planet, we have to account for these factors. If we ignore it, then at some point we will not be here anymore. I was probably going out of high school and becoming a student and becoming more concerned with environmental topics. At the time, climate change and later on biodiversity. I realized that there was a lot of work to be done at the interface of human choices and environmental impacts. Here at the ASA, in terms of biodiversity, we are actually a relatively new group that is soon to be established and uh, starting next year. We are trying to get together a crowd of people that are focusing directly on biodiversity and try to put it more in the center of the debate. At the moment, um, we use a lot of models to forecast into the future but biodiversity is not explicitly addressed in there. So uh, still the question how we address uh, either is it species richness we want to keep or do we need to account for functional richness which means the ecosystem will be more stable to a potential climate threat. So far often in much of the research biodiversity has been just a single variable that is thrown into another model for instance and then provided as some side benefit. Essentially, what we're trying to achieve is actually to put it at the core of the re some of the research that we conduct here at EASA. Recently, I've been involved in, in two different uh, papers that are very relevant to the questions around biodiversity and the policy decisions in the decades to come. And so this first paper was coming to the conclusion that ambitious goals, such as reversing the decline in biodiversity loss, might be feasible, but only at the condition if we have a broad and bold and integrated plan that combines all of these types of intervention, restoration, conservation, and do transformation of our food system. On the demand side, less waste and better diets, and on the supply side, more efficient production, then we can actually bend the curve of biodiversity loss. The other paper we looked at uh, focused on the restoration question. Restoration is part of the actions we can do to improve the status of biodiversity, and we can turn land that was used into agricultural production and put it back again to nature. And the main outcome of the paper was uh, to look at optimizing restoration plans for reaching multiple goals. And what happens if you restore only for biodiversity, how much would you lose as a potential gain for sequestration for climate change? One of the outputs that we created, which was particularly a new global map of habitat types that integrated both land cover, climate, and land use in a single map. I worked on the Nature Map project the Nature Map Project is a global initiative that brings together several data providers. In this initiative, we bring all these best available data together. So this whole global map will be provided free of charge to governments across the world. And it's particularly useful for conservation management options. So for instance, if you want to see, okay, we want to expand our current protected areas in the world, and this is a signed goal by many countries in the world, it is obviously becomes a question, where do you best do that? Where are the places where you get the most value for your protected area, where you can save the most carbon, the most biodiversity, and also with other included values. And our maps and our data can provide a very good baseline on a global scale. Research is important because uh, it informs decisions. So we need to understand uh, what biodiversity trends are going to be in the future under different scenarios because 
we have options. We, we have choices to make at all level, at individual level, at uh, administrative level, at the uh, largest possible governance level. What makes me optimistic is uh, that I've seen firsthand that when people care and uh, decision makers are wise and uh, they, they act in the best interest of the environment, uh, they can make a difference. I'm quite happy uh, and quite looking forward to uh, the next years at IASA where we collectively decided to invest much more on the questions of biodiversity and transformational change in general for reaching the sustainable development agenda. I think we have a responsibility towards our children and grandchildren and all future generations to preserve uh, the natural wonder of this world. If we all do it together then we, we will be able to do it because is there, if there's a common interest Humankind so far did the most amazing things.